You're tuned in to us because we're tuned in to you. Everything you want to hear from the voice of so Cerritos College, the WPMD on the net, where people make a difference. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Falcon Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob Flores, here at Cerritos College's WPMD Studios, where people make a difference. At this time, I'd like my guest to please introduce himself. Hi, I'm Solomon Namala. I, uh, I teach at Cerritos College, and uh, I teach economics. Excellent. Now, um, one of the first things I do when I have a, a guest is uh, I like them to talk about, you know, uh, from the beginning, like, what was life as a student like for you? Um, as a student in college or in uh, high school? <laughs> uh, high school first, and then, um, you know, after high school, you know, um, did you know right away what did, what was the next step? What school you wanted to go to? What major? Um, no, <laughs> not really. Um, what was school like? I think just like... Uh, Anyone else, uh, uh, you know, I had a good time with my uh, with my friends, and uh, you know, studies uh, were not the major focus uh, uh, when I was in school. Uh, I did okay. I wasn't uh, the first in the class or the top ten percent. <laughs> um, 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 some subjects I barely got through, and uh, um, somehow um, did okay uh, getting out of high school. Um, did one year of college uh, um, in India, and um, that's where I grew up. Um, I think my my parents, especially my mom, uh, wanted me to be a, a doctor. And, uh, you know, everybody, you know, most middle class families in India, they push their kids to be either a doctor or uh, an engineer. Those are the two things uh, that parents uh, push you, <laughs> push their kids. Um, I wanted to, so I applied uh, to medical school. Uh, I didn't get in. <laughs> Uh, then I did one year of um, college in India, and then uh, I moved to the U.S. Um, uh, to continue my my studies, my B.A. and then my Ph.D. Hmm. And what was uh, were you um, involved in like uh, clubs, um, fraternities, stuff like that? Um, no, I you know I was not in uh, in. Um, um, during my undergraduate, uh, I was not involved in uh, in clubs. Uh, I went to a school uh, in East Coast, a small school. Uh, it's called Westminster College. And um, I was there for two years before I transferred to the East Coast, Portland, Oregon. And I went to Lewis and Clark College uh, there. Um, it was quite an eye-opening experience for me coming to U.S. and uh, going to this small college. I was the only Indian uh, student, I think, <laughs> in the whole campus. It's a small uh, school, maybe 2,000 students or so. Um, and uh, um, not many you know, people of color. Uh, and I think I roomed uh, with uh, one uh, one Malaysian <laughs> student and one uh, uh, student from Spain, and uh, it seemed like we were the only foreign students uh, on campus there. <laughs> um, so you know, I just uh, focused on studies. Uh, uh, my whole first year. The <laughs> uh, Everybody else called me the Indian. <laughs> That's how, uh, you know, they didn't call me by my name. So I didn't have a, a really positive experience in those two years uh, there. So I just focused on studies and I did well for the first time 
in my life and then I moved to um, Lewis and Clark College for the last two years. And um, what was, uh, um, was it hard to adjust uh, coming here? Uh, yeah, it, it was hard to adjust. You know, when you're in India, um, you have this uh, concept, at least in those days when, uh, you know, internet was not there and uh, uh, the image you get of, uh, of America is um, uh, through movies and novels that we read. And, you know, it's like oh, the land of milk and honey, <laughs> land of opportunity. Uh, all the women are in bikinis and, uh, you know, that's the image. And so uh, when I came here, uh, you know, the, that college was near Pittsburgh <laughs> in Pennsylvania. And then I saw homeless people uh, looking for, for food in garbage cans and all that was completely... Uh, quite different from the image I I grew up with in India. Uh, you know, I saw some poverty in inner cities, um, and and uh, you know, uh, usually when you leave your country, uh, you actually appreciate your country even more. So I began to appreciate uh, my own country, <laughs> and. Uh, Life was pretty lonely for me in my first couple of years. Um, I, you know, in India, just like in any other third world country, I think families are important. And the social life is much more closely knit. You have friends and families, friends and relatives. Uh, all that wasn't there here. <laughs> um, so that was pretty, pretty shocking. Mm, to me hmm. and um so the degrees uh tell me about the degrees that you achieved uh my my i have a ba i did my ba in business administration um that too i didn't put much thought into it i mean everybody in india was saying oh you you get uh, you need to get uh, business administration and that's where all the jobs are hmm. Um, so I, I pursued that and I didn't really, really enjoy them, I enjoy the classes I took. Then I started to explore, took more classes that I liked like philosophy, sociology, um, some religion um, classes. Um, and I actually I love, uh, uh, I love the con concept of a liberal arts degree in the U.S. I think you have this nowhere else in the world where students get to explore um, different disciplines <laughs> um, which actually broadens our perspective. So uh, while I was doing that I decided oh, I'm not really, my heart is not really in, in business. So. Um, um, and I always, um, I think, tell my students too, you should do what you like <laughs> uh, as a simple lesson in life. <laughs> uh, and I think when you do what you like, uh, then uh, actually you will do well, you will probably excel in it, and money will follow. <laughs> but if you do what you think uh, will bring you money, will bring you fame, I think that's... a uh, that's a, in my perspective, that's a way to fail. <laughs> oh, we'll be right back after this quick break. WPMB spends next week remembering Prince. Every night at midnight, we'll debut a special album break featuring a different classic Prince album. Monday at midnight Pacific, it'll be Purple Rain. Tuesday, it'll be Hit and Run, Phase 1. Wednesday, it'll be Hit and Run, Phase 2. Thursday, it'll be Musicology. Friday, it'll be Parade. And Saturday, it'll be a soundtrack for Batman. Then, later on Saturday, we'll have two new editions of Roadwork, each featuring a complete, uninterrupted concert. At 9 a.m. Pacific, we'll have the 1987 rehearsal for a Sign of the Times tour. Then, at 1 p.m. Pacific, we'll have Prince on stage in Europe on his Love Sexy tour from 1988. Then, on Sunday, starting at 9 a.m. Pacific, it'll be six Prince album breaks back-to-back. 
And throughout the week, we'll be featuring a special tribute mix of Prince's hits, created by DJ Tism of Spinning Out of Control. Join us as we pay tribute to the music and the life of Prince, starting Monday at midnight Pacific, only on WPM Beyond the Net, the voice of Cerritos College, where people make a difference. May is Foster Awareness Month at Cerritos College, along with California College Pathways, will be presenting, in honor of Foster Care Awareness Month, Foster Youth in College. Who are they and how can I support their success? The presentation will be held on Tuesday, May 10th, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Room SS uh, 213, here at Cerritos College, Norwalk, California. Okay, so Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's. Yeah. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Yeah, of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle show. up your seatbelts without giving uh -huh. me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What? What? about a minute worth of commercials. Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ag Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. It's live right now. And welcome back to the Falcon Spotlight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Rob Flores, here at Cerritos College, WPMD uh, Studios here in Norwalk, California. And you're listening live to WPMD. Now, WPMD, uh, you know, for those of you who are listening on your computer, you can also listen on your smartphone. So all you got to do is go to the TuneIn Radio app, and uh, all you do is search uh, WPMD afterwards. Um, and in addition, we have iTunes as well. Um <clears throat> Now, I'm back here with my guest, and I was wondering, um, what tips do you have, you know, for uh, international students as well, you know, when they're transferring over here, um, some coping mechanisms, how did you get through, um, you know, uh, feeling lonely, you know, and being introduced to, you know, a whole new culture and stuff? Um, I think it's um, what works for... Uh any other student also works for uh, international students too. I mean, simple things like, you know, finding friends, uh, being more engaged on the campus actually will help you uh, make friends um, too. Um, I was not so um, uh, involved in, uh, in any outside um, hmm, extracurricular activities like clubs or any of that my first two years where I was at this college um, and that was actually pretty miserable um, for me uh, um, like I said the, the three of us uh, who were foreigners we all roomed in the same room so it was pretty you know it was just the three of us uh, pretty isolated um, in one one positive thing coming out of that is yes okay that really made me concentrate only on school work and I did well in uh, uh, in my my studies uh, I, I'll give you one experience you know when I was in uh, in India I really struggled in math I remember you know, I think in the seventh grade I got a zero <laughs> in my math test um, and then I came here and I was taking calculus and I got a hundred percent in uh, in my calc class uh, at college and uh, uh, and one of the things that uh, that um, um, stuck out for me was that uh, you know math from the beginning if you uh, if you follow the it's very logical right so if you follow from the beginning if you follow the lecture and follow the uh, <coughs> Um, the read the book and follow the lecture um, 
then it's easy to understand the subject. But if you've lost the fundamentals, it's very hard to uh, uh, to keep up with it. And in the, in India, it seemed like you know, I really didn't understand the processes. I just tried to memorize by rote, and that really uh, didn't work uh, at all. Um, so I always tell my students, you know. Um, uh, if you understand the mechanics behind how things are done, then actually you will do well, <laughs> rather than just memorizing stuff. <laughs> you know, another thing that you know students sometimes uh, they go through is you know sometimes they have to work while going to school because you know uh, sometimes books can be expensive and you know tuition and so forth. Tell me about you know the earlier jobs you held. You know, uh, I was very fortunate. I had a scholarship, so I didn't have to work. And, you know, my um, hats off to our students. Um, uh, I'm really, I'm, I'm always amazed and humbled by actually uh, our students. The things that uh, uh, they have to struggle with, uh, you know, finding work, and then once they find work, uh, managing work and school. Some of them uh, work, uh, you know, I teach a class from 6 to 10 at, on Monday nights. And I know some of my students go back to work and do a night shift and work till 6 a.m. <laughs> and then he's back at 10 o'clock to my office hours and the next day. So it basically had four hours of sleep. Um, it's amazing that still students are are managing all this, uh, managing uh, uh, work and studies, and still um, doing. Um, somehow they've overcome these obstacles, and my hats off um, to them really. <laughs> Uh, and then on top of that, there are family issues uh, and uh, relationships, um, you know, um, girlfriends or boyfriends or partners, uh, and how uh, they negotiate through all of this is, is really incredible. <laughs> and all of this I, I didn't have. I didn't have to. I didn't have all these other uh, uh, things that... Um, you know, took me away from study. So it was easy for me to do do relatively well in school because I didn't have all these other obstacles. <laughs> who are some of your inspirations? Oh, who are my <laughs> some of my inspirations? Um, um, uh, well, in terms of public figure, I think when I came... Like I said, you know, when I when, sometimes when you leave your country, you try to uh, you appreciate your country much more and the culture and all of that. Um, so when I came here uh, to the U.S. Uh, around the same time, the film Gandhi was being uh, it came out at around the same time, and I was very much uh, influenced by that. And I read um, Gandhi's autobiography. <laughs> um, um, and next, so in one sense, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gandhi played a very important role um, for me. And so after I actually got my BA, I wanted to go back to India and, and work there and work especially in the villages where there is a um, with peasants who uh, there was an issue of bonded labor where you know they're it's almost like um, some not as bad as slavery but they're they're tied to the landlord and uh, um, they work for the landlord paying off debts which they can never repay and they, if they cannot repay then their sons and their daughters then work for the landlord and so generations together, they are bonded to that um, person uh, and that family. Mm. Uh, so I worked um, for for about a, a year or a year and a half with uh, bonded labor in in the villages uh, from the state that I grew up in. <laughs> um, 
and it was um, very tense. <laughs> uh the you know obviously the landlords did not like what uh, uh, our organization was doing which was um you know teaching them um, literacy <laughs> to the peasants and also um, telling them about their rights their legal rights uh, and which made it uh, quite tense uh, the landlords did not like what we were doing so some actually <clears throat> um, the physical safety <laughs> of some of us working there was <clears throat> uh, was at issue <clears throat> so it, it was too tense for me <laughs> and i decided that's not what i would like to do uh, i wanted to come back um, um to the us also because i fell in love with somebody <laughs> who lives in the us <clears throat> and i uh, i came back uh, i got married in india uh, and then i came back to the us uh, uh, i wanted to do my phd in economics because i wanted to do economic development uh, which is dealing with how to how do we develop third world um, countries and economies that was my interest at that time so i pursued my phd in economic development and my hope was that i would go back to <laughs> india and then and work in you know develop developing uh, uh, the economy and their policies <laughs> um but you know life uh, has its own <laughs> uh you know uh, takes uh, uh, turns and twists that you don't anticipate so and then i got into teaching <laughs> that's another story <laughs> tell me about it how did you make your way to sales uh, how did i make my way to sales to well you know when you're a phd student uh, in graduate school um uh, you have to teach uh, as part of your fellowship and that was the case for me as part of my fellowship i had to um, teach um, you know whole this i went to university of utah <laughs> uh in salt lake city and that was an experience in itself uh, um because uh, uh, uh again uh, as an indian i sort of stood out <laughs> uh at the university and uh, we had to teach uh, <coughs> um um you know basic econ classes uh, not not teach first year you had to i was a ta teaching assistant so every fridays um um uh, we ha- we had to hold um, discussion sessions <clears throat> you know four or five sessions uh, all friday and um um you know in general i'm i'm quite a shy person at the beginning with uh, people that i don't know and um and it was uh, hard for me to speak uh public uh in public <laughs> and so my discussion sessions uh, were nerve-wracking for me i would go to dis- through the discussion session <laughs> and i would see all these students you know in utah it's hard to find the uh, um let alone uh, finding um um black people like myself it's hard to find people with black hair <laughs> um and so i was there i was very self conscious of who i was uh, um trying to lead discussions and uh, um the students couldn't understand my accent <laughs> uh and i would uh, uh, and i'd be really nervous i would lose track of what i'm saying in class and one 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 by one uh, uh, students are leaving the discussion sessions and they would be by the end of the session there would be four or five students uh you know one guy sitting across the table from me with his legs feet on up on the chair in front and reading the college newspaper and not listening uh, and i would lose track of what i'm saying and so it was really nerve wracking that whole uh, uh, my first year and i remember thursday nights uh, i'd start having 
severe headaches <laughs> um, anticipating Friday's um, discussion sessions and at the end of the first year in uh, uh, of my first year of my graduate program I went to my uh, graduate advisor <laughs> Uh, and said, uh, look, <laughs> his name was Steve Reynolds, and I said, Steve, uh, I don't think I can do these uh, discussion sessions. Uh, can you, for the next year, can you please put me as a research assistant? I will help uh, any other fac um, professor on in the department in research, and I know some who are doing economic development, and that's I would like to help them. And see, usually in graduate school, especially in fields like econ and, and uh, you know, physics or some of the other fields, um, most of the graduate students you find are foreigners. Uh, it's, um, you don't find many Americans in those programs. <laughs> and in our um, program at that time, was there were quite a few from couple from Greek, many from China, and uh, and some from Russia. <laughs> and Steve would tell me, oh, uh, Solomon, uh, <laughs> uh, as awful as your accent is, at least, uh, you know, people can understand something. But uh, some of the other students, it's even worse. So, no, no, I can't put you in, uh, <laughs> in research, so you have to go back to... <laughs> TAing, being a teaching assistant. So I had no choice. So I I started to do that and slowly I got used to it. <laughs> and then by the end of the second year I was teaching, they gave me whole classes um, to teach. Uh, so that's another thing I tell my students too. You know, try different things and even if you, you might not like it, but see, <laughs> Uh, and uh, don't give up the first time that you had a bad experience. Um, so now, I, I think having done that there, I slowly grew into teaching, and uh, and now I, I I wouldn't give it up, give up this profession for anything else. I would say this is the most rewarding experience. <laughs> uh, and I always tell my students, <clears throat> Uh, teaching is one of the best best jobs and especially teaching at a community college is really fulfilling. <laughs> when did you start at Cerritos? Um, you know Cerritos um, I started in 1999. <laughs> I, um, um, I finished in uh, uh, I finished my graduate school in 1994 uh, my wife uh, was Austrian. We met in uh, in graduate school, and we went back to Austria um, to live. Uh, you know, they lived in a small village outside of Vienna. <laughs> um, so we lived there for about a year um, there, and you know, I taught at a I taught part time at an American school um, in uh, Vienna. But, um, you know, both of us didn't like it living there. Mm. Um, and uh, my wife um, actually, um, in that year while we were there, applied to graduate school at UCLA. Mm. Um, and she got in there and with a big uh, region scholarship. So that was our ticket out of <laughs> out of uh, austria so we came to la and um, she was doing her phd at ucla and uh, i went uh, i took my uh, cv or my resume and i went to all the <laughs> colleges uh, in the la area saw the econ department chair and left my resume or CV and um, uh, I got called in, I got offered uh, part-time jobs at uh, Loyola Marymount, um, LMU was the first <laughs> job I got, then Pepperdine, um, I got some, some teaching, then USC, <laughs> uh, 
uh, um, so I thought mm, those places they were all private mm. um, then Santa Monica College mm, called me for, for uh, part-time teaching and I really enjoyed it uh, teaching at part-time part there then I thought also at Harbor College <laughs> many places Cal State Fullerton I thought mm. a lot um, finally uh, uh, during that time, I thought I, I liked working at um, community colleges, especially teaching these basic um, classes in economics, which, uh, which I liked uh, a lot because, uh, you know, the more advanced you get in economics, uh, upper division, it becomes uh, more abstract and unfortunately and, and more... Um, um, more theoretical um, and obviously more quantitative um, too um, and uh, the introductory classes are actually where you can talk about um, uh, public policy and social issues all those things uh, that are important so and I liked teaching um, um, the introductory classes um, because I can talk about bringing in social issues, contemporary events, and all of that. Hmm. Sounds good. And um, we'll be right back after these public service announcements. Hi, I'm Silos from the New Jams Radio Hour. I'm Utao from Asian Pop Hour. Hi, I'm Justine from Mimi on Main Street. So you can help support WPMD. And it's easy. So you just do our website, WPMDOnTheNet.com. Once you get there, yeah, click so on the Amazon.com yeah, banner near the top of the page. And that's, and that's, and that's, that's why I try to fit as much as possible. Because like, like, that's why it's, it, it, it's so interesting, you know, once you get into a person's story and you try to cram everything all at once. It's a great way to help WPMD. And get all those great bars at the same time. Remember, just go to WPMDOnTheNet.com, click on the Amazon banner, and start shopping. It's your way to make a difference for the place where people make a difference, WPMD on the Net. And thanks. Thank you. We appreciate it. Happy shopping, and thanks a bunch. For all of its musical contributions, America has made the greatest mark with jazz, the hot jams, and the cool licks. Armstrong, Mingus, Brubeck, and Miles. The whole spectrum is presented each week in sight and passion of WPND's longest running series, The Jazz Lounge. Join Anthony and Lisa every Thursday night at 7 Pacific for two hours of jazz, big band, lounge music, and the best of jazz lounge only on WPND on the net where people make a difference. As I went through school, one giant question loomed over me. What did I want to be? But in order to know what I wanted to be, I had to first decide what I wanted to make. I wanted to make more. So I became a teacher. Now 